An angry Mr. Whitlam responded to his sacking in a speech on the steps of Parliament House. Well, may we say, God save the Queen. Because nothing will save the Governor-General. There are few more iconic images in Australian politics than Gough Whitlam on the steps of Old Parliament House on November 11, 1975. But they are crowded images. The just-sacked Prime Minister shares them with a phalanx of press gallery journalists. Those front steps were a much more regular haunt for the journalists than they were for the Prime Minister. They clambered onto two of the camels to reaffirm the opposition's commitment to the railway line. Reporters, cameramen and sound recordists would spend hours on those steps, awaiting the arrival of politicians at what became known as the doorstop, or the doors for short. The first Labor budget in eight years. The doorstop was very much a function of television arriving here permanently at Old Parliament House in the 1970s. Instead of just radio interviews and formal print interviews, everybody wanted to see their politicians on television. And there was nowhere more obvious for them to see them than here on the steps of Old Parliament House. It was a funnel for everyone. The executive from the Prime Minister down to the most humble backbencher. Gough Whitlam was the first person or the first Prime Minister to really make use of a doorstop and that's around the early 1970s with the beginning of video recording uh, but then um, really the person who perfected it is probably Malcolm Fraser. Why do you say Malcolm Fraser perfected it? Because he realised the power of the doorstop to actually set the agenda for the day. The wrong side of the couch, absolutely. <laughs> By that stage, also the camera crews and so forth and journalists were getting used to the concept of doorstops and what they could gain from them as well. I'm not answering questions about the ministry. One of those cameramen was Douglas Ferguson, one of the press gallery's greatest and long-standing veterans. This was it here. We, uh, we stood here every day waiting for the members of parliament to arrive, mainly the executive, because that's who we were interested in, and obviously Hawkey and he would turn up, bound out of the car, try and find someone's hand to shake. Hey, hey the rules haven't changed. <laughs> Hawke was well known for a doorstop when he was in the mood. Prime Minister Hawke had a few words to say in Canberra. He used it as a, um, a public relations exercise. We'll be very, very tough competitors again. Everybody was funnelled through the front before they moved off into the rest of the building. Long before he entered Parliament as an MP, former Treasurer Wayne Swan was a long-term Labor staffer working in the old Parliament House. Senior politicians, Prime Minister, they'd all be held accountable at the front. They couldn't get past us to get into the building. And so in that way, there was an air of transparency about working in this building for a journalist. We knew the car numbers when they turned up. We knew that Paul Keating was in car 22. We knew that uh, Bill Hayden was in 17. It was a place for them to drive the agenda of the day. Mr Fraser did not respond to journalist questions about... Policy positions, leadership manoeuvrings and personal vendettas were all captured on the front steps of Old Parliament House. Well, you fellas would sort of contain yourselves and recognise there's no challenge and accept that. You perhaps take some advice that I gave last week and go and have a cold shower, we'd all be better off. Even when they didn't want a big question, they still had to come in the house and we knew how to get them. There's to be a spill of leadership positions on Thursday when John Howard's political future will be decided. Andrew Peacock tried to make John Howard pledge that he would never challenge him. He was prepared to pledge support but go no further. No leader can lead his party effectively with one arm behind his back. All of that played out on the steps here. Another day, another door. Keating, when he was in full flight, that subdued anger that he has could um, bring a really crunching Quote, From this day onwards, Mr Howard will wear his leadership like a crown of thorns. And in the Parliament, I'll do everything I can to crucify him. It was a, a fantastic quote. I mean, it was like, you know, getting a punch to the chest. A few of them would do well just frankly to shut up. Federal caucus met today. In the 1970s and 80s, federal politics all happened here in Canberra, rather than being spread around the country. It wasn't just when Parliament was sitting. That's true. The, the Prime Minister lived here. Keating was here the whole time. He lived here. The executive of government were here and they were um, available. When everybody moved up the hill to the new Parliament House in 1988, 
everything changed. There wasn't just one door for a start. MPs and senators had their own doors. Ministers and the PM could get into the building through an underground entrance. You are in the revenge and obfuscation and just being villains. In 1992, proceedings inside the parliament itself started to be televised. It changed the dynamics and the stars of the morning sessions at the doors. The great thing about the doors was that it gave a platform for crossbenchers and backbenchers that they wouldn't otherwise have. And if what you said was um, outrageous enough, interesting enough, relevant enough, uh, you might get a run. Just to remind uh, President Trump that Australia is not the US's doormat. It was a good opportunity to do the odd visual stunt. It's the second anniversary of the Abbott government and uh, I thought I'd bake them a cake, a submarine cake. We tried eating it, it tasted like crap. With safety glasses when you need them. It became the mavericks and the entertainers that came to prominence. <laughs> to stir up the stupid people in the cities of Australia who think that bananas come out of packets. There is a uh, message uh, in this bottle that uh, I'm no longer trash, I'm cash. It's like I got the music in my mind saying, it's gonna be all right. How's that? It was a two-edged sword. I mean, the doors were also used by a number of people who didn't do it very well. Uh, and those of us who were around inside watching this would frequently go out and then comment <laughs> on the mistake of the person who had been at the doors. To this blatant and corrupt use of public money. A tax cut of $4, that's eaten up by these two loaves of bread. Having first lost the drama that comes with being able to quiz the Prime Minister of the day and then becoming the preserve of the Mavericks, Security concerns and shrinking media resources took their toll on the ritual of the doors. But it was the closing down of Parliament during COVID that finally killed off the doors altogether. I think losing that means we've just lost that little bit of accountability and diversity in uh, the voices and the messages that come out of Canberra. It's the nature of the change in the media that has changed the doors. There are less staff doing more covering politics. Polys now have other options where they can bypass traditional media, but it's not the same as being asked questions by an independent journo. I'm still hoping the doors will return as an institution, but um, let's wait and see.